Childbirth is a subject that's very, very close to my heart. I really do believe that every single woman on this planet uh, has the capacity in her, if she is healthy and baby is doing well, that this is an option that is open for anyone, irrespective of which strata of society she's coming from. There is an extreme sense of power, um, sense of accomplishment, uh, a deep sense of compassion that she will experience if she were to go through this. It is true that in the last few 10-15 years, even in my career, that I have seen that there is this sense of uh, why natural childbirth? Are there not um, any other methods, let's say shortcut methods to go through birth? Yes, there are. There are definitely interventions today. There are means where you have medications where you don't have to feel labor and go through the process, which are all options and choices today. But for the woman who feels deeply rooted to knowing what her body can do, to know and experience what it is like to push forth a life in its most rawest sense, uh, this is something that I feel can be explored by every single woman. I feel it's a choice. I also feel that if she feels in her mind and in her body that she wants to experience this, she should not be deterred by anybody else. In India especially, um, everybody other than the woman seems to make a choice around natural childbirth. It could be her husband, it can be her in-laws, it can be her cousin. You see so many people out there trying to tell you what to do when you're pregnant and how you should birth, except the mother. I do feel that a birth, when it is in her control, when she is able to decide how she would like to go through this process is when you have an empowered mother and when you're able to make better decisions for your baby. and that's one of the biggest turning points as far as a mother is concerned when you can make that call for yourself otherwise we are bound to have a mother that's broken we are bound to have a mother that feels defeated we are bound to have a mother who is just not feeling complete this is what the basics of a foundation of a family is standing on so if a mother is defeated uh, I do not see how she is going to lead the rest of her motherhood and parenting for that matter in the healthiest way possible. Let's divide birth into three categories. Natural childbirth is birth without any interventions. Uh, and that includes everything from your IV lines to induction to episiotomy. That's what a natural childbirth is. Probably what my grandmother had. You know, maybe a, a generation that was birthing 60 years back. That's what I would define as natural childbirth. You have the next set, which is vaginal childbirth, which comes with intervention. So you could be having an IV line, you could be having an episiotomy, but you would be birthing vaginally. And that's, a, you know, that's what is falling today or you call the so-called normal uh, vaginal birth and the third is of course a cesarean surgery now again a woman can decide which one she wants to go for but the problem today is that everything that's vaginal is construed as natural this is the biggest issue because unfortunately though India is a seat of uh, Ayurveda and all things natural we have today forgotten what natural childbirth is. We are in the space where we call vaginal, all births vaginal as natural. So there is a clear distinction and there is a clear division between these two. And I think when we call a spade a spade is when we realize what is it that I want.
So I do feel that there are interventions that may be required uh, by the woman. There may be uh, instances when a woman is dehydrated in labor, she's not able to eat and she needs that energy for sure. There may be instances when the baby is going into distress and an episiotomy is required. Yes, and that is the need of the hour. That is the need of the situation and that's why we have interventions. So the answer is a woman can birth vaginally with the help of interventions and if there is a required need definitely that is the way to go for sure but it doesn't mean that that has to be the story of every birth it's quite possible she could have had an interventional birth the first time and if she aspires and if she wishes she can have a non-interventional birth the second time around that's how i would put it uh, also i feel uh, a lot to do with birth is to do with nutrition and lifestyle so how we prepare our body how we prepare our mind will have a huge impact on how we birth as well so i don't feel we can separate birth from how we lead our life also i also feel a mother's emotional state and mental well-being is really crucial now if we are not able to respect her if we are not if she's not feeling emotionally secure uh, if she has a lot of upheavals how can she possibly focus on something inside of her if you really ask me a lot of us are lost lost in work lost in family lost in a multiple other crises that by the time she realizes it's time to have a baby it's actually when she, it kind of registers in her head oh i'm actually pregnant you know by the time nine months would have gone by uh, and every woman i think means well for her baby inside everyone does but if we are not able to support her well enough whether it's through nourishing foods whether it's through a healthy lifestyle whether it's by giving him her space to be we can't expect that outcome we can't you could be from a very, um, you know, extremely well-educated background. You could be from a family that's, uh, you know, again, maybe, you know, doing multiple careers. But if you have a family that says, don't climb steps and just sit like that for nine months, then what are we expecting? Nothing. Similarly, if you are under a lot of pressure socially um, or in a position that you have to conform to a certain set of traditions, again, you're not helping her. So I do feel she needs to be in that mental sense of well-being she needs to have that and probably be at peace with whatever is happening around her i'm not saying life is perfect it never is it's always a roller coaster but how can we assure her as a community of having that sanctuary around her because that's when she's able to grow this baby at its best and maybe that's what we can see from villages for example you will find that you know i was reading yesterday in africa you have when a woman is pregnant the whole community comes together or you see a herd of elephants they all come and form this herd around the mother when it's about to give birth we were never meant to go through pregnancy or birth alone nobody was it's just that we all went into this isolated nuclear bubbles you know that's i think that has been the biggest uh, fall of current society is that pregnancy is considered as something isolated i do feel that uh, see when we look traditionally it was women supporting other women at birth right it, men were never part of the picture and uh, there is a great sense of support when that happens again with the medicalization of birth when we pushed women to bigger institutions and we isolated the family and we put them out and women were having to birth alone is when the deviation towards other drugs or other medications and women wanted some sort of support and that was when all these interventions also grew then came the next point where in the west they started men should you know be part of the process and that started being picked up a lot i still feel there is a space if the grandmother was part of the process it could improve the birth to a great extent but however today's grandmothers are far removed from natural living again that 
they are so far removed that they are so nervous when their daughters go into birth and that's when the whole concept of childbirth education classes the whole concept of husband being inside labor came in and they seem to have a great experience together i also feel it has a great impact on parenting because everything is shared and everything is divided and sometimes you have these dads doing so well that the grandmothers ask you know what am i sitting for here anyways because the dad is doing everything so uh, i think it's fantastic i think it's uh, really nice that dads are part of the process um, and uh, it shapes a whole new society especially as far as india is concerned because it's still alien it's still very much alien so i do think it is the way to go forward but also meaning to say at the same time that women supporting other women also has a sacredness around it for sure and i am for one i am also looking forward to is there a way to evolve that around because there is a sense of sisterhood there is a sense of beauty when women support women in labor for sure one thing i really like about my profession is i really get to see men vulnerable uh you don't get to see men a uh, man i mean i would like to say men are taught to mask their emotions in our society right as a child what do you say you're not meant to cry like a girl you should be strong you need to be like you know you need to be the protector you are the provider that is what we teach but birth always brings that sensitive aspect out in you and i've seen men cry i've seen men break down i have seen i've seen men weep um i've seen men immediately call their mothers because that's what they went back to you know so i think it's amazing to see that on a daily basis and somewhere i have had so many men who say to me that i could never do what she is doing and i can't think of what my mother did for me either you know and that's the beauty of having men inside that space yeah <laughs>
you know so that's that's something that she kept telling me uh, and that's what trauma does to you so i really feel when we go through this as a family we need to be sensitive about it we should be open in our society to say you need help you need to maybe you need to visit xyz for further things but what happens is when a such a statement is made suddenly you have a husband who says no you don't need help you don't have to see anybody you are still in a society wherein if the person who is being referred to as a male you know the husband feels vulnerable what is she going to talk to another male about all this you know so it's all opens up different uh, diasporas as far as a private life is also concerned but sh for sure women who go through traumatic births do need help they do need the right channels of referral they also need to be heard you know and sometimes it may be hard but sometimes i could be the care provider where the woman has had a traumatic birth and i may have to sit to hear that by hearing that she may be able to resolve it at least 50% so i think honesty and communication is the cornerstone as far as this is concerned we have to acknowledge that there are certain situations when interventions are required i do feel care providers do need training that is gentle to the woman explain everything in detail consent should be obtained um, i'm not saying we are all perfect we are far from being perfect we make mistakes every single day but the point is to reflect at the end of the day what that mistake is and to improve our services every day i don't think there's any care provider who wants to inflict harm it's just that we are all taught in a particular way and we just keep doing it every mother deserves an explanation whether she is coming from a lower social economic strata middle social economic strata or a higher economic strata a lot of people tend to take poor people for granted it doesn't matter what do they understand what will they know this is wrong i think every mother must be explained clearly of what is going on this is the biggest complaint we hear today is i was not explained that must not happen so i do feel that communication is vital um even the most most important exam which is what we call pv or checking a baby sorry checking a mother internally to see what where she is at labor can be done gentle and most women like the information but provided it is done in a respectful manner after the birth is over one of the most important things is to bring that person which we are talking about in this case is the baby to the mother immediately skin to skin contact let her enjoy that one two hours without any extra information extra bombardment sometimes i say after the birth let's just leave the room just let's leave that um father mother and the baby in that bubble for them to enjoy by themselves without us getting into that um that's one thing second thing i feel is that special two three hours alone that in our culture the husband the wife and the new baby what they get they will never get back here because in indian families a newborn family is never alone right there's always 100 people jumping into it so that two three hours is probably the only three hours they will get the only three you know so i keep saying that is such a special moment for them let let them enjoy it we i think as care providers have that freedom to tell other people you are not allowed to come in for the benefit of the new family right so let them enjoy that peace and that's something i think people will when we say it and we become a barrier it's of course there are people waiting outside but it's for the good of the new family you know so i think that's something that we can do also i feel um having asking her who would you like right now with you to have that person there and let them connect together with that baby i think these things will mitigate what she felt as traumatic to a huge sense also talking to her you know how do you feel let's take it that she's had a birth that didn't go as per her plan maybe she wanted a natural child but it didn't happen but i also think when the care provider sits with her talks to her explains to her again what the intervention was what it was about i think we all have the capacity to understand provided we are explained what it is uh, i think that's where the gap uh, in maternity care exists is that we do not explain we do not talk and uh, we just think healthy baby healthy mother and that's the end of it we don't go beyond that that's the gap that needs to be bridged today
whether a birth goes naturally or whether there's an intervention or even if there is a surgery happening what is most important to me is does the mother understand what is going on that's where i'm coming from because ultimately it's not my birth right it's her birth um, and after coming to my new facility here, we've had cesarean surgeries here. And at the end of the surgery, after the postpartum, I ask them, are you happy? Are you okay? And they always say, you know, we feel comfortable. We've understood what the reasons are. And that's all there is to it. So as long as the mother understands and as long as the mother has the comprehension of what happened, we are good. I also feel when we make a decision about intervention, I tell them, see, Currently, the situation is this. This is what's going on with your body. Do you want to wait? Do you think we should take up this intervention? This is how I put it across to them. They'll, and there's a lot of situations. We could have waited for labor maybe 20, 24 hours. And for whatever reason, there is no progress or there's a sign of distress. And I tell this is what's going to happen. What do you want? And every mother says at that time, you know what? Let's just get a step down so that I can have this baby safely right now. This is the immediate response I get from the mother. Rather than when we say, you know what, we're going to move you to an emergency C-section right now. I think our language, how we explain and having that mother again take the seat of decision making makes a huge change. This is what we're trying to achieve in our new center is also is how to make it as family centered as possible. And when we give the decision making there, it's a success no matter what be the birth.